All right, and we're live. We are on. Welcome to episode 78 of the Happy Hour. One to the people, the only show left on the internet that uh, doesn't take wines as seriously as ourselves. Or is it the opposite way around? I don't know. I've had a couple of GNTs. I mean, it's pretty arguable if we take anything seriously on this show by, the, by now. It is episode 78. And I would like to know from everyone sitting at home how the sound is working. Uh, oh, yes, Justin's already straight in saying yes. The sound is A, A grade. That's because I am hardwired into the internet like the Matrix. Uh, because last, did you see what happened last night? Oh man, that was like, you, you got to see uh, like the, this, was it the seven stages of grief Aww. occur within me, within the first like <laughs> three, four minutes worth of this whole live stream. Uh, guys, I'd like to introduce you to someone uh, incredibly special. One of the big uh, ideas and aspects of this entire show was to be able to showcase young people doing absolutely awesome shit in, this, in the world of wine, amongst a few other sort of heavily politically loaded things that we like to comment on this show. Not really, we don't really. Um, no, but this, this particular person has traveled quite a fair way to Adelaide and established a, uh, a, basically it was a concept of a bottle shop, a wine store, as I understand it. Uh, and like, and, and it was a proper wine store, like a physical one, only for COVID to hit. But that, this didn't really deter this particular individual because they went ahead anyway and opened the bottle shop online. And it's one of the most incredible uh, things that, that Laura and I in particular have been saying had Adelaide had needed for a while. And in fact, Australia had needed for a while. And of course, I'm talking about Olivia Moore. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us. First things first, would you like some wine? Would love some. Please. Love some wine? Always. Because I have to, uh, massive, massive, massive shout out uh, right now to Lockie George. Mm -hmm. Because he came up here, I missed him because I was down at Elizabeth getting the stuff to hook up to the internet. Uh, wonderful place, Elizabeth, isn't it? Um, no, but he dropped this bottle off, uh, and this is a reference to an episode, probably 50 episodes ago, about Slankamanka Bella. Mm. This, this very niche. Have you heard of Slankamanka Bella? I not. It is a great variety. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to see popping up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like we're just planning anything that ends in an A or an O. Um, but I actually thought Amata Vino was the only one that made Slankamanka Bella. Um, but it turns out Coriol, the, the, one of the eponymous wineries of, of, uh, of McLaren Vale, did make one as well. And Lockie was kind enough to be able to, to send us a bit of a bottle. Um, want to try it with me? Would love to. I mean, it, it, could, it, could, it could go both ways. We'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, tell us, Olivia. Lock? Lock. I go with Lock, but I like say, yeah. How did that come about? I, it, I think, kind of like you said, um, I felt like there was a lack of ability to buy natural wine retail in Adelaide or South Australia. Sure. Um, in London, it was always very easily accessible. Lots of bars and restaurants sell it, um, and there's kind of a big online presence as well. Uh, but and again, like Sydney, Melbourne, they've got, got access to bottle shops, but we just don't have. I don't think the ability not not somewhere that's got a big range anyway. For sure. <clears throat> so I just found buying one I want to sell. Well, sorry, selling one I want to buy. It's actually really um, interesting. Laura and I both sort of noted that exact same thing a, a, a while ago, because Adelaide, interestingly enough, and I, I'm, I, this this is me speaking from a mind about six years ago now. Adelaide didn't really walk through it. We all know it's the wine state. We work in the wine industry. Yeah. But it didn't necessarily feel like it. There is some amazing cocktail bars. There's not a lot of retailers around. And, yeah. and I mean like numbers of retailers, just not that many. Yeah. And you are right. Like it is retail bent to a particular type of clientele yeah. that I wouldn't actually consider myself a part of. Same. I think I'm not at all. And I think there's the likes of some great independent retailers who have kind of started to grow their range. But they're obviously catering to a very different demographic as well, which I... I guess I'm going the opposite. I'm selling wines that are very specific. You're kind of like you're looking for something in particular. You're looking mm. either for the grapes to be grown organic or a certain style of wine. Um, and I just don't. I'm, yeah, I just don't think it was available in such high quantities. So how did you? What led you to actually? Obviously, you started the bottle shop. What led you into wine in the first place, though? Kind of accidental. Um, I had. My background background is more online retail, uh, or just like working cool. websites and marketing. And my first job in London and in wine was um, I didn't know anything. They wanted someone who kind of talked to the consumer and translate all this wine speak. 
For sure. Um, and then I kind of fell in love with it. Just do it. Like you, you hear about producers, you meet producers, and then yeah. gradually got more and more involved. Yeah. And that was in that was in London, though. Yeah. So how did Adelaide come about? Uh, because I got quite curious about why uh, I wanted to over here. Um, still planned three months over here, and then going to get a job. Like never got my flight home. London. Really? And the, yeah. I mean, I've been back since now. But I never, I think it was meant to be three and just over three months total. And after I had 28 days left, and I handed in my notice, and I've never got on my flight. It's too good here. The quality of life is like crazy compared to London, I think. That's like a big call. Yeah. Like, because I know it's like a, it's a chip on a lot of Adelaidean shoulders. Yeah. That, uh, you know, a lot, of, and I think a lot of Australia as a whole, we always think about, oh, you know, it'd be great to go live in New York. <laughs> Maybe not about now, but it would be great to go live in New York. It would be great to go live in London and, you know, you do the whole sort of city thing. Yeah. And, and, or, you know, we see quite often a lot of sommeliers, a lot of really, really, really trained um, uh, individuals in, in our industry quite often will be pulled towards the Sydney, Melbourne side yeah. of things because that's where you know, the money is and that's where the prestige is. Um, but recently, and I mean like only in the last 12 months, have we seen... People moving back. People moving back. And I'm, yeah. I, it makes me super excited because the confluence of, of talent. Yeah. Some cool shit's gonna happen. Oh, I yeah. mean, we don't know what, we don't know when, but we know it's gonna be soon, you and know? It's a nice time as well because I think a lot of people are doing that. Lots of people that I have previously met in passing are moving back because they've kind of done their, their bit mm. and they realise that Adelaide is, I think, the accessibility to everywhere, like the hills, the water, and kind of everything being relatively easy to do. Um, you know, less queues, etc. I, like, I like the less queues thing. <laughs> it's the less thing queues thing's absolutely is. fantastic. I'm, I hate queuing. Now I go home, like to England, and everything's difficult. I'm like, I, I'm a real complainer, I think. But the self, it's the self checkout things that I, we've had. We've had a number of technologies. I feel in in supermarkets yeah. where you know we've had the ability to be able to, like tap and go and just you know self checkout. We go to the States and it's still the most, I yeah. half expect them to pull it, you know, go, oh, here's my card and they look at you weird because they've never seen the card before. They pull out some machine, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow, we've gone like well back. They're like a phone at them. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's why we don't really do this. All right, jumping straight onto the comments. Uh, thank you so much, Justin. Of course, the reigning uh, crown of the first commenter goes to you again. Uh, Jicky, HD, Wendy, Christina, Amanda. Hi, Liv and Brendo. Thanks so much, Amanda. Good to see you. Uh, Lucky George, awesome. You got a ho I hope you like it. I think you meant I hope right. you like it. I mean, uh, <laughs> my heart is racing. It's actually, um, I have to say, you know, because it's really hard to get, a, I guess, a pass standard for a great variety that absolutely no one knows. Yeah. Um, it's, it hails from the Balkan uh, area, I believe. Um, but this smells absolutely nothing like the one that I tried. Really yeah, from Amato Vino. This smells, this actually smells like. Um, this almost smells like Albarino. Yeah. Like a really um, uh, sort of high toned Spanish white, as opposed to what I tried was more like a, like as if someone, you know, what they describe foxiness. Have you had a foxy wine before? You had like Native American grapes, like turned into wine. I prefer to as foxy. Well, they, they, talk to the, they talk about sort of na Native American grapes like Vitis Labrusca uh, as having this foxiness to them. Yeah. And it's one of the weirdest things. It's like trying to describe a fajoa. If you've ever, have you had a fajoa? Uh -huh. Oh my God. It's like, it's like the most fucked up thing. It's like a pineapple meets a kiwi fruit. I don't know. Meets a frangipani. Uh, it, it's, it, it's really polarizing for people because it's so aromatic. Yeah. Uh, it also smells like the back of a Thailand taxi cab, not the durian kind, but right. like this, like the, the like fake smell, you know, oh, where they, yeah. they, they spray and then wipe it down. I think we're getting a lot of that during the COVID days. Um, like soapiness? Yeah, but that's, yeah, like a soapiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Slank and Maker Bella that I tried last time was soapy. This isn't soapy. This is, this is, I drink this. Yeah, it's That's a good, good, fun little drink. Uh, Manny Roberts visited a seriously amazing gin. 
win. Uh, all of the Gen Isolation packs, so couldn't uh, wait to actually visit. The coral is fabulous and so different, uh, which is what you guys had before. Uh, and the coffee, mm, yum. Oh, yes. I love coffee. I go to bed with anticipation to wake up to drink coffee. I go to I've bed excited. I've done that before. Yeah, really right. thing. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. It's also like you come home from a coffee roaster and you've got like, like a really cool Ethiopian natural, yeah. like super geeky sort like of thing. Smell. And you're like, I can't drink it right now because it's like 11 p.m. That would be irresponsible. It would be. Um, great service. Thanks, boys. Thank you very much. Um, cheers, Wes, Terry, Lock your life balance is better here in SA. It's amazing, but some life in the UK is next level. Yeah, I think that of slightly Hashtag. different though. In London, it would be incredible, I think, to be on that side of service. But because I was kind of like working at a big um, winery warehouse, it was like out of London, so it wasn't the kind of sexy life that you're. Where you're where sold. where at, where out of London? It was Park Royal, so it was like really far west. It was just not really. Is that like near Midlands? No, 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 like, no. Like, like as in an hour away, or like half an hour out of the city. Yeah, right. But just like huge warehouse, very unglamorous, and I was like sold this London life. It's just going to be so incredible, and like you'll have heaps of money. You don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like you have, I was lucky. I had access to wine, but that was kind of the only bonus. I like this. So this is my, my comment about Fajol was how sort of polarizing it can be. So firstly, Justin Hess chimes in going, Fajol the most revolting fruit ever. <laughs> Jicky then goes, Fajol the best winter fruit ever. <laughs> it's serious to have Brazilian uh, picana on the rotisserie. What is that? I have no idea. Hey, um, uh, Terry, tell us a little bit more about what you're cooking. Plus everyone, you've forgotten your job here. Your role is to let us know what you're drinking at home tonight. Uh, irrespective of whether you're on the beers or on the waters, uh, I would like to know, for Joel should still be in season, time to chow down. Um, you've brought, I have brought wine. a cheeky blind tasting wine. Should we crack into that? Have you played blind tasting before? I've done it, I've always like present. I, with the guys from East and Sellers, I'll sit there and just be amazed at how well they get it. And I'm like, I think I panic about what it's supposed to be before. It's okay to be wrong though. Yeah, like, I, I, I've I, been I'm wrong. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> not okay, no. And then I forget that. And everyone else gets it wrong. Like some, an expert who's like incredible gets it wrong. I'm like, oh, it's okay. That's love. Yeah, well, we're definitely not experts on this yeah. show. It really, it really is. It really is just because it's it's a fun and amazing sport. Uh, oh. I, I assure you for that. Um, well, we are going to be jumping straight onto blind tasting. No longer the only sport left on Australian television, but it is a sport left on Australian internet. Uh, are we going these glasses? No. Mm. We have that? special black glasses. I love these glasses. That's right. That's right. Um, I don't. Because it's I, fine? I, I've, it, Does it yeah. throw you off? It's like, completely, no, it's, it's very disorienting. It's yeah. very disorienting. Plus, I just think they're shit glasses. You know. Like, I'm kind of with you there. Like, I hate that they are hideous. I would never want them in my house. <laughs> yeah, people like, like, what are you really going to do? if you left it like that, but I think they've got a good purpose. Well, we have, we literally, uh, we had these given to us. Yeah. Uh, and we were that's going nice. to review them as shit wine inventions, because I believe they kind of are. Yeah. Um, uh, and... I, um, we found them out the back when we were cleaning up and we just thought, you know what, let's, let's screw it. It makes good TV. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, okay, so there's, this is a wax is bottle, a wax. is it? <laughs> oh, hello. This is fun. Oh, it is disorientating. Like, I know what it is, but, but it's still disorientating. Cause you, yeah. I think you're just so used to, like, visualising wine. This is fun. No, no, it's delicious. No, it's because we've been going on a bit of like a, a spate of people bringing on like intentionally like... D like tricky ones? Yeah, yeah, stupidly tricky I ones. I nearly did that and there was like a seven... Oh, that's blend, fine. Seven wine, uh, great blend. I was like, I can't. <laughs> it's just too brutal. And so like, we, I mean, you could, you could, but I mean, it's, 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 it's never going to be in with a, in with a chance. You've got to have yeah. like, I think, I think there's got to be tension. You've got to be in with a chance, yeah. right? Um, but no, this is good because, uh, and I was hoping this would happen because it's one of those things. I'm, I'm uh, in my drinking habits. I, I admit, I am agnostic. Yeah. I will, I will drink. We've had wine makers from Jacobs Creek on here, yeah. and I'll drink that. I'm like, hey, cool well, wine, cool wine, <laughs> fun thing. Uh, and then the, the, the opposing side, um, 
I, I, I will drink some some heavily fucked up stuff. Extreme, extreme uh, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. I, it doesn't bother me. I just find I find all of it interesting. And I yeah. think everyone at home. I think that's the intrigue of wine is that there is such a mass divergence of, yeah. of these different different styles. And um, as long as it doesn't leave two camps divergent of each other, you know. Yeah. Hopefully, you know we can bring people together with wine. This is made with a philosophy that I really like, and it's really tasty. It's yeah. really yummy. I think that's where I started to like. I. I think it's interesting to taste lots of wines, but I I find it less interesting if they're being made in bulk. I think that's probably where I started looking into yeah, They're commoditized wines, wines I guess. Yeah. Wednesday night wines for people that don't really want to get into it. They yeah. just want a, what a commodity, I yeah, guess. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, I guess, drinking for drinking's sake rather than like an, an interesting story. You shouldn't drink for drinking's sake. No. I don't think anyone should ever drink for drinking's sake. And that's sort of, that, but that's, I think we're, in, we're quite fortunate we're in that place where we just sit and talk about what we're drinking all the time because it probably is quite interesting. It's a really cool story, really cool narrative. Well, yeah. All right. Are you familiar with the the game? The, of yeah, 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 yeah. Did you want to ask Are the they, questions, uh, or would you like Laura to? Do you want to go? Oh, do you don't know it? Do I you? don't. I don't know that much about it. I'll put the comments down so Laura can let y'all know what we're actually uh, what we're tasting. She, oh, am I doing? It? She's writing it down. No, she's yeah, reading it down. Just let, I just let the picture... Okay. Cool. Um, new or old? I, I think it's... I just forget the questions. That's why. Well, one fun thing we start on the show is with whether it's white or red. Oh, sorry. Because we don't know. White or red. <laughs> but I would say it's Can red. Can you ask the question? Oh, you don't know what it is either. I'd say it's red. Yeah. Cool. And I'd say it's old world. Yeah. Cool. Um, France, Italy, Spain. I think the reason why I really like this wine is that it's so well in balance. Each other. Like this is, this is not a. I call them fuck you winemakers, where they're yeah. like, fuck you, I make whatever I fucking want, uh, and they inevitably make something that is so asymmetric and yeah. showcasing one thing in in such remarkable clarity, but to the degradation of everything else. This is someone that's actually paid attention. There's yeah. like a experience. Yeah. There's this is this is awesome. Like it's lifted. The acidity's there. The tannin is full and rich and round, and it's. Erring on the greener side, but not 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 green in in totality. Just errs on that side, so it's, it's a thrilling drink. This is this and is like I think thrilling in, in the best way. It's not like a, I think a lot of people look for kind of a stylistically natty wine. Yeah. But I think it's it's I don't know. I've started to I think drink wines that are made naturally, but actually mm. they're not like crazy wines. They're, they're very high quality. Yeah, they, this is this like, is. I would drink this any day of the week. Yeah, any day of the week in copious amounts. Yeah, um, responsibly. Yeah. I, was uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I drink it for the flavour, not because it's alcoholic. I, I hazard a guess that this doesn't actually have as high as alcohol as, as other other wines that you might be familiar with. But um, I'd say it's France. Yeah. Cool. What do I go? Largely because Spain and Italy have a concentration of fuck you winemakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it Burgundy? Oh, right, okay. I'm not sure which one of those. Laura always throws in like a red herring. Yeah. I'm not sure which is the red herring. That's actually the hard one because um, this has some really full, like, amazing tannin. And that makes me sort of feel like it's Languedoc, like it's an early harvested Languedoc. Full producers down in Languedoc that should, should, should be recognised, but aren't. Um, I, I, I don't think this is Pinot. It doesn't showcase, you know, the herbaceousness that you would expect of something like this. So I think it's Beaujolais. Correct. Boom! <laughs> I'm a terrible winner. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Do we do, we, do, we do sub regions? Is this like a cruise? No. cruise? no, no. Or is it just a mixture of cruises? Everything tied together. It's just literally a mishmash. It it's not. Yeah. Oh, it is an appellation. Oh, this is this is where this is where natty wine tends to like be divergent because they're never the the the, the cruise that we are aware of because yeah, they just haven't I mean. hasn't been the proliferation of them. Uh, I feel whether or not like Grand or Premier or Deuxième Cru like. For me, it's it's all dirt. 
I said I am very agnostic when it comes to dirt. Too, or have it, yeah, farmed and made, I guess. Yeah, right. So vintage, let's jump to vintage then. I reckon this is 2000. I'm just going to stab at it. Stab yeah. at it. Yeah. Because this is the thing, like, you know if it's come from overseas, right? Yeah. You know it's not What is that? It's... I, I feel like that's one I'm always confident with, but I don't know what, I, I don't know why. Like, well, I always pick the vintage. No, the vintage. Like, like new or old. Whether or, oh, for me, again, balance. It's, yeah. it's trying to find that, that confluence between um, really amazing sort of fruit weight and yeah. ripeness. And then you have a look at the acidity to see whether or not the acid is is sort of blocky, like there's been an overt tartaric acid addition yeah. or something like that. And if it's not, if it's an Australian natural, it's it's actually blocky on the malic end. Yeah. So you actually see like a different, you know, acid is a little bit like comparing acidities is like comparing salt to MSG. Yeah. You know, there's some some are better than others, um, uh, but they all they all do different different things with the palate and different things with the flavour. Yeah. You know, tartaric acids going to impact the palate a lot different than malic, lactic, and sulfuric. And there is, I think, 13 different acidities in a grape variety, and you can tell it's almost like someone's shading in different sort of. Um, I or do, yeah, different types of graphite to, to, to shade across a picture as opposed to just going, here's a crayon, or a fucking tartaric. Yeah. Uh, and and you, end up, you end up having wine, it's just like, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. it's just like, oh, and now there's acid. Yeah. Um, you know, so you can see it's, it's the, the acidity on this is fantastic. And then it's all confirmed with tannin. It's all confirmed when it's all like, it's, it, is it a full sort of vibrant tannin? And yeah. this feels 100% natural tannin, like it's grape derived tannin. Yeah. There doesn't feel to be like a lot of barrel age on it either, or if it is, it's really old barrel age. So there's not a lot of lactone based tannin. Mm. And you can tell by, I don't know, it's a synesthetic thing. Like I describe tannins as sort of shapes and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, like this is, is like suede with a little bit more grip, a little mm. bit more grip, like a wax suede or something like that. Um, yeah, this is uh, really cool. But I think like, once you go grab all of that information together and you kind of whack it together, you're like, it's either really well made, new world, like next level, yeah. right variety, right site, right winemaking, amazing exposure, amazing sort of everything sort of handled along the way. And the fact that it's probably made with no sulfur um, just doubles down the importance of the ability of the winemaker to be able yeah. to put this out. Um, yeah, this is fucking, this is cool. This is at the upper echelon, I feel, of, of, of this philosophy. Um, this wine, um, 2017. Younger? Yeah, right, 18. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. So eight, eight, we're typically seeing a lot of 18s, obviously natural wines yeah. uh, out here because 19's too young. It like, doesn't, but I don't think that tastes young at all. Like I, no. I would have guessed. Older? No, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I was giving it a little bit of credence. I was yeah. giving it like, like But it's not to like that tight. I don't know. I mm. tend to think that they come out a lot tighter, or maybe no, no, that's a look. Too. Yeah, cool. All right. So, what's the um, what's the producer? Tell us about. Oh man, I'm a sucker for a label. The color of the glass. Shit, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that is so good. <laughs> we got to bring this back seriously. Um, this is bright, bright green glass, and I, it is so appealing. It's like so, it's the typical glass bottle green. Oh man, it's like a light here. I need a. Oh man, you guys are gonna see this. This is like this is flashbacks from the seventies, man. That is like too good. That is brilliant. So what do we got here? Uh, right, I actually had a French person at my house the other day, and I was double checking how I pronounced Romuald Vallo. Um, so he's Romuald. zero sulfur. Uh, which I think, I, I still think that wine is, like I'm saying, it's not like that crazy, but it, the That's quality fine. of it, given it's travelled and it's a couple of years old, and it's I don't know, I'm very impressed by the quality. Um, but yeah, he does no chemicals in the winery or the vineyard, does everything um, very much without machinery in the vineyard as well, kind of like winching his own soil. He's Horses? A, he's, a ha uh, he's got it. I think it's like a hand. I've read a hat or hand or like five foot. He uses like. I'm it's like a scythe kind of deal. Like it's a his own his own yeah. sort of digger. Yeah. That's insane. Um, so this guy doesn't even have horses. Like he's gone pre-horse. He's he, gone full hands. Like that's insane. But he's yeah. And I, I don't know. His, there's very little information about him. That's on a recommendation. Um, and I tried his Village Beaujolais, which is incredible. Much lighter. Um, and you got yeah. some of these? Yeah, yeah. You got some? Did you want some? <laughs> oh, yeah. Grab a, grab a glass. 
But, but so for the people commenting at home, we, we have reopened our bar. And um, as you've seen from the change of set, uh, we have relocated now to one other end of said bar. Um, although it's been a, a, we've been very humbled with a, a very, very busy day. And so uh, we'll see some comments about parties going on in the background. There you literally hear it? is. <laughs> you can definitely hear it. It's not as silent as it usually is here. It's nice. Um, it's that refreshing, like, bar sound of yeah. clinking glasses. I love it. There's a, I know, well, that's a thing because obviously you've spent a bit of time in bars. Yeah, in bars. <laughs> well, no, well, no, yeah, in, in working. Bars. Yeah. yeah, in wine bars particularly. So you yeah. had like a, like, you came to Adelaide with a vision. Like with a really specific, it think, sound seems like. I think I wanted to become a winemaker for like a, a hot minute. Yeah. And then I, I've still kind of like always just involved the back of the, well, not the back of the house stuff, but like mm. websites and marketing. And um, I just felt like being more immersed in the wine side of things. I think like working bars, actually pouring wine, talking to people about wine mm -hmm. is what you need to do. Like working behind a desk at a computer is not really you kind of like, you, you stop yourself learning. So I just started working in many, many different bars. And, and tasting as much as you can. Tasting as much as I can. Yeah. Like, and just meeting people and meeting mm. winemakers because Adelaide, obviously, we're very lucky. You actually get mm. the producers selling half of the time. They come in For and sure. they chat to you. And um, I just think like putting yourself in that situation gets you way more exposure mm. uh, to the product, which I wasn't getting in enough. And offices. And they're fun. Well, Adelaide's a bit of like a baptism by fire, I feel. Yeah. As well, I'm, when I moved down from Queensland, I thought, you know, I'd already spent three years in the industry and working in, in wine stores, and I thought that I knew everything there was to know. Yeah. And I'd flown out from France after spending, you know, a number of months up there. Um, and I very much realised very quickly that three-year-olds in Adelaide knew more than me about wine. Yeah, like you're, it's, it's high school, you like you just know it off by yeah, heart. Yeah. You don't have that in English <laughs> at it's, all. It's, it is really interesting. It's also a weird bubble. We, we experienced something sort of somewhat similar when we went to Auckland. Yeah. Where, you know, here, and I think all in Australia, natural wine as a concept yeah. has, has established itself. It's very new in places like America where they've really only really discovered it yeah. like two years ago and it spread like wildfire. It just went everywhere yeah. now, um, as things tend to do. Hopefully it's sustained. Yeah. Um, in Australia, it's it's been like a slow, it kind of came on the scene and it was a slow creep and a slow creep and a slow creep. And just in pockets. Adelaide though. Yeah. <laughs> Adelaide's this weird like, this weird sort of bubble in and of itself. And in Auckland, it was like that. Um, we sort of arrived there and went to a, a wine store and you know, it's such a close, Culturally, yeah, it's, it's so close to us physically so close to us as well uh, You walk into a wine store there and you're like hey, where's the um, you know, where's the cool natural one that, that, that doesn't, None exist. Of it. doesn't exist Yeah, I'll tell you what does exist shitloads of Kunora Cabernet Absolutely. And I realized very That's quickly excellent. where all the Kunora Cabernet in Australia is actually <laughs> consumed actually in something. New Zealand <laughs> so was, Which is which is really quite frustrating because Kunora Cabernet is you know one of the most it kind of like flies under the radar uh, a lot yeah. Um, and it's got a bit of a bad rap, but you know, it's got the rap that gin had yeah. maybe 15 or 20 years ago. It's going to have its time. It will. It will. It'll we'll all be making all the wine makes it be like, you know what? I don't, I don't need Pinot anymore. Yeah. I'm over um, it. I'm over it. Just Cabernet is my jam. Uh, <laughs> <You> <laughs> it's like, it's never going to happen. Uh, all right. Straight to the comments. Uh, Heart of Hill Blue Blood Blau Frankish. 2015 was preparing a pork roast on the Weber. Nice. There's a lot of like roasting going on. We're going to do some sort of like, uh, what do they call it? Birria tacos? What are they? Uh, which are like uh, beef tacos, like roast, like cooked for like eight hours, but you dip them in this. Anyway. Sounds great. I'm so sorry for any of the vegetarians <laughs> and vegans out there. Uh, tomato game. Uh, nice. Um, is Noah having a party? I'm not too sure. It is a Saturday. Uh, even Noah needs to have a day off, uh, I think. <laughs> Uh, we're doing something new, Gioconda Amphora Roussan 2019 Skin Contact. Seriously, these guys drink so well. <laughs> You're this, like, Sue I'm and just... Craig, like all the time. I, I want an invite next time uh, I, I'm near you guys. Pretty please. Uh, Levon de Cote Syrah uh, with smoked brisket. See, more roasting yeah, going on. This is like roasting weather. It's a winter guys... thing though. Like I, my English comes out of me, I think, in winter. I'm like, can we have a casserole or like, <laughs> like a cottage pie? And my, people I live with are like, oh, you're in your real like English winter thing. It's so good though. I sit by the fire that I don't have and like have, <laughs> have like this like baked thing that's just really just, you know, meat and potatoes cooked for eight hours. It's great. 
I'm drinking Clouds Riesling, uh, compliments my Georgia girl. Would that be Ministry of Clouds, uh, Wendy? Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm a glass deep in a curse pipe dream. Man, you guys are like, like. I thought someone guessed it, it was you. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> no, no, that's fantastic. Um, enjoying your navy gin on the rocks now, yum. Thank you so much, Gavin. Uh, you underestimate the difference in climate between Australia, most of it anyway, and New Zealand, BC. How, how so? How so? Like, is, well, I think I would I would assume New Zealand's much colder. Yeah. Than, than Adelaide. But do Am we I put wrong? that in a pocket with other cool climate that actually it's got its own? Kind of, do you know what I mean? Like, I think everyone says cool climate, and then puts Adelaide's it in not really cool climate. I'm like, no. I'm like, and this is controversial from like an Adelaide Hills wine producer perspective because they're like, we're cool climate. I'm like, you want to be? Yeah, it's still forty something degrees when, yeah, it, when it's forty something degrees, you know. Yeah, and I'm yet to see that in New Zealand. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, we'll see. Moment. But I mean, it's, it, it is one of those, though, like the temperature thing. Um, you know, I, I remember we have vastly more vineyards already established on the hot fringe yeah. of winemaking rather than on the cold fringe of winemaking and it's unfortunate and fortunate it is what it is but um you know we get so fascinated as a as an industry with the cold fringe of winemaking yeah white cliffs of dover you know down southern southern britain you know into obviously you know champagne Cambridge yeah. soils a thing the portlandian soils i think we actually know this stuff and we've studied it yeah but no one can tell me shit from morocco yeah, sure. You know, and it's it's it is frustrating because you know even some of the greats of wine, Alain Grao, you know, established uh, a winery and, and vineyard in Morocco. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, this is there's, there's something here. Like if we and you you know think if you're in um you know you're in Bordeaux, the way you approach viticulture is vastly different to how you would approach it in Champagne. Yeah, something to do with snow and everything, I'm sure, and the other place being a swamp. But we approach viticulture. Almost identical from Tasmania to the Riverland. Yeah, I don't actually appreciate the. And it's so weird. It's so odd. You know, to, do you think if we started to focus more so on the on the actual, you know, viticultural differences on the hot fringe, we could be leading the world in terms of you know hot fringe winemaking? I think people are they're doing it maybe more so in terms of um, like choosing grape varieties and what to plant where based on whether or like the native. Um, Varietals, like if they're used mm. to a certain climate, then they will grow well here. Therefore, they're doing that. But I, I think you're right. I'm not sure that that there's still a blanket approach to this is how you do it, this is how you grow progress. Like rather than necessarily focusing exactly on your not even like a sub climate, but like mm. your tiny area. Um, but not I don't know enough about this culture to. I remember Make any when, recommendations? <laughs> I remember when we were in uh, Polish Hill River, there's an amazing vineyard that we sourced from there that was established by Penfolds. It was a trial block. Uh, and uh, they, they established a bunch of Dolcetto, Barbera, and Nebbiola. This goes into our Trouble Hound and Jungle Jungle wines. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we were trying to get them to rework the Nebbiola because it was um, what we call double cordon and spur prunes. So basically, the bulk wine method. Yeah. Like, it's probably the, the there's only one other method um, beyond that, that's worse, like, like that's pro bulk wine, which is what they call yeah. minimal pruning, which basically just looks like a hedgehog all yeah. the time. It's incredible. Um, I mean, incredibly bad. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, look, Nebbiolo doesn't really grow. It's not, you know, when, you, when something kind of comes out, and there's a couple of spurs here, right? And that's what it grows from. Yeah. Uh, it's not fruitful, actually, in its first couple of spurs. It's actually fruitful in the mid spurs, like six or seven spurs down, but you already cut them off. Yeah. That's why we make the determination between spur pruning and cane pruning yeah. for certain varieties. Um, and so we're like, yeah, we need to get you to go to cane pruned and we're going to you know, pay it and fund it and stuff like that. And the grower goes through and he's like, yep, I know exactly what you're on about and I know exactly what you're doing um, and, um, and, and converts this entire vineyard. And what he does is he actually spur prunes it which completely removes your ability to lay canes down because yeah. you cut them off. Yeah. You can't put them back on once you cut them off. But he left one extra long cane, just so it's like everything's all spur print, and then one extra long cane that was just trained along. So now it's effectively three yeah. cordons, all growing in sync with each other at two different rates with two different levels. What we call, like we address this with, I think Justine Henschke, what they call a sucker. Just basically one gigantic sucker that sucks most of the energy yeah. to decrease the energy in the other, you know, uh, spurs. And um, we rocked up there and we were, 
I had never seen this before. You're like, I was like, this is fucked up. It. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, but this guy had been, uh, and he's actually a really good, uh, uh, really good vineyard hand. Really, like a, a vineyard manager is like you. You won't find a better one. But he had been growing. and He's like, yeah, this is this is it. He just comes down. What do you reckon? And uh, I, I was like, yeah, yeah, not, um, you know, when are you going to go by and remove the spurs? Obviously, because you've laid the cane down. I was expecting two canes, actually, going in different directions. Um, uh, but what are you, you going to, what do you mean? What do you mean we're going to move the, the corners? Well, why, why would we do that? <laughs> this is it. Like, like, this is what we call cane printing. He's like, ah, oh, Frenchy shit. Yeah, you wanted Frenchy shit. Yeah, okay. No, no, this is what we do to Riesling to get it to double the yield. <laughs> we, were like, <laughs> we were like, no, we were actually, it was already yielding too high. And we had to halve the yield. <laughs> so it's been an ongoing process. And, but you're so, still working with them, that's good. Absolutely, yeah. no, because it's, to be honest, like we, we when we sort of started winemaking, we, um, you know, we're faced with it, obviously you're faced with a number of decisions because yeah. you don't have the, uh, what I like to call, which is probably a bit unfair, but for us, it, it, it's more fair, the baggage of legacy. Yeah. We don't need to worry about having to honor a tradition. Yeah. So we can do whatever you want. Uh, and if you could like build your, your ideal wine winery, you know, it would have, you know, um, solar panels powering everything. Yeah. You know, it would be completely organic or biodynamic, completely sort of, you know, hand harvested, uh, wild ferment, et cetera. It's what I call the small winemaker rap sheet today. Yeah. That, that's, how you would ideally do it. The problem is the actual uh, amount of organic vineyards that exist. So if you go out and start um, just taking from, the, like, we're gonna do only organic. Yeah. Right, you're gonna tread on everyone's toes because the only organic people are taking from all the organic vineyards that, that are there yeah, and they need more to, to go it. into it. So our mission was to be able to help work with people to be able to change them from non-organic to organic or other, yeah. other practices or more sustainable practices. So we really, I guess, focus on people that we can work with. Yeah, the best time. thing about this guy, once I explained to him exactly what, what he needed to do, he went and did that. Right. <laughs> it was just really, really good to work with. <laughs> the but direction. We definitely, uh, we definitely have tripped over ourselves a couple of times. Um, New Zealand is wetter and colder. Wetter and colder. Uh, Lockie George Bernard Magres Wine God makes wine in Morocco. Now, Lockie, have you got any bottles to drop up to me? <laughs> See you at 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Lockie, we're going to get you on the show. Seriously, because um, uh, that's actually really cool. That's significant. That's actually given me a lot of hope in Slacker Maker Villa if it wasn't for the fact that the only vineyard in Australia was ripped out. Or have... did Coriol plant that? Oh, sorry. I was going to say you can have the Dilf duo. Yeah, the Dilf duo. <laughs> Double Dilf. Yes, <laughs> we could. Josh and Lucky. Uh, all right, now we are not going to let you uh, go out of here without having a crack of wine tasting yourself. Right. That would be that would be unfair. So Noah has has um, uh, wrapped up a bunch of bottles. I don't know what they are. Okay. I genuinely do not. Um, but take your best pick. That one. Cool. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and Laura, Laura's going to have. Do you have a? Either I sink it I or... I don't think I do. Oh, I do. That's waste. You need top up? Oh. This is a great wine, by the way. What is this? Is this on the website? Your it is website? on the website, yeah. How much would it set me back? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, were you waiting? Oh, I think it's 50-something, 50, 50 58. Nice. No, I Are you doing sort of <laughs> specials, like if people buy like a whole six or a whole 12 or anything like that? Uh, yeah, so 10... 10% off six, yep. and then free delivery over $100 for Adelaide, and then anyone outside of Adelaide is 150 Sorry um, guys, but you're just further away. Yeah, but like people gen for the same day in Adelaide as well. <laughs> like, like same day? Marketing over there. Same day. So literally, if you're like, like you're working in an office, um, you're working in an office and you're like, hey guys, it's Friday, yeah. what wines we gonna, I have heard this place, do you want to split a six pack, mix six pack? Yeah. Order by five o'clock. Order by five o'clock. Order by five o'clock. And I was over by eight. Jesus, stay my back in the wonder, office. My wonderful helping hand is delivering today. Have Friday, have Friday drinks back at the office. Just wait, and more wine will rock up by eight pm. That's fantastic. That is so good. Do I need to rinse this out? Oh, uh, it's fine. We're fine. I mean, wing it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna guess white. We 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 don't we don't know what color it is. So rinse, but also hydrate. <laughs> Thank you. Are they listening to dubstep in there? Is this like after hours? This is cleanup. 
Oh, okay. oh, we got cleanup dubstep. Oh, Dubstep's not really in the Applewood vibe. I'd be worried <laughs> yeah. if there was customers there. Uh, and that's the know. best, like the first song that you put on after you shut doors. <laughs> you know, and it's just always on like 90s hip hop. Yes! <laughs> so <into> it. <laughs> we have a whole playlist. At Clever Little Day Notes specifically. We have a whole playlist of 90s hip hop. All right, are you ready? I'm like, I'm like triple parked on drinks here. I'm, I feel like a, like this is how we do it. That is such a cool idea. Like if I was working in an office in Adelaide, then I knew that I could get it same day. I, I wouldn't even yeah. bother. I wouldn't even bother with anything else. I would just go, yeah, cool. We can just like. And then you buy for the office. I've, got, I've had a few people buying like bulk for the office, and then every, every Friday I deliver, and they're like, it's not just for me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know. I'm like, that's okay. Like, Please keep going. That's actually fantastic. Like, like when you think about, is it just wine? At the moment, but I've got some ciders, beer, and gin mm. coming very soon. I've very kind of cool. got it. I'm just waiting to have a bit more, and then I'll do a thing. Cool. That's uh, that. That I think is one of the best services for Adelaideans. I think you know because <laughs> it's it's all well, because otherwise they like, it's actually hard to get parking in the city. Yeah. And yeah, so, like, how do you just go to a bottle shop and just, you know, pop in? I think can't. that's it. Like, I, I often go, I like walk and I'll get a, a bottle. I don't think people necessarily buy bulk bulk, but they do more so online because they kind of suck up for the week and then drink it in the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose also buying for the weekend. Like, that would yeah. mean that you don't need to have sort of wine taking up cellars and stuff like that. And cellared wine's fantastic as well, but. But there's, yeah. I think there's a there's a a lot of people will sell wines always, and um, but like I think my I kind of cater to myself I guess like I I buy wine to drink quite quickly like or you know I want to drink it this weekend or I want to drink it with dinner or whatever like I'm not I've got kind of a few bottles put aside but I won't keep them forever like they're just See, I'm waiting for a you know fancy dinner party and then I'll do them. <laughs> I'm an out of sight, out of mind sort of person. And because yeah. we live in a 30 square meter place, it doesn't have a cellar. Yeah, I but just, I mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've got, I mean. You just got like a. I was trying to describe to people that. <laughs> I have like cabin fever. Our cabin's just a little bit bigger than most. Yeah. Um, but the, like, I, I, I will, I do that really bad thing where it's like, you know, there's three bottles of wine on the bench. Yeah. And that's a goal for me. As in, like, them. you've oh, to finish the oh, right. <laughs> You're like, this is it's gonna like, be my achievement. It's like, yeah, but once you've done, it's like like a packet of Doritos. You never yeah. eat half a packet of Doritos. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm always I mean, aware that they're there. Like, right. I think I don't like planning that far in advance. I'd rather just be like, oh, what do I want to drink tonight? And they're there. And now I'm like, lucky because I can be I can treat my <laughs> warehouse like a shop and be like, oh, no, what do you want to drink tonight? It's good. All I'm right. never going to get to the point if I think Chester actually was the one that told me like he buys three of everything, so he has like one to drink now, one to save, and one to share. Or I can't remember what the third one was for, but it's a great mentality. I just does he like, do that? Or does he, he just does? Drink them? But but he'll I think he he'll always drink them eventually. But he I think it means it's so that he can kind of taste it now and not miss out, but mm -hmm. then still have it to come to like whenever he wants it. That's a great method. Yeah. He's a what? Neb head. Oh, he's a neb head. Okay. <laughs> um, I like to do that with Pet Nat. Go like a six pack of Pet Nat or like a 12 pack of Pet Nat. And then because in, they're inherently going to be in and of themselves inconsistent because they're designed to be inconsistent. Yeah. So you can actually see them develop. Yeah. And I, I, for me, it's the joy of Pet Nat. And you can have them in relatively quick succession. You know, in Australia, by the time that they're actually ready to go, you're basically in September. Yeah. Between September and December, you can consume a dozen of the same wine, but they, they, are, they aren't the same so wine. So different. They are so incredibly, and they're getting more joyous. And then, yeah. like, in my mind, you just have a massive pet nap party. You can just grab them from, like, four or five different producers yeah. that you really like. And then you can consume them throughout that time period, and then you have New Year's. You know, <laughs> don't, don't need imported wine. Got pet nap. You know, we're fine. I think that's completely <laughs> legit. Um, all right, let's 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 do this. Laura, are you ready? Yes. You are ready. Is it old world or new world? I think it's white wine. Yeah, we're gonna go with white wine. <laughs> oh shit! I'll put the comments down. Sorry. Old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, is, this, <laughs> like is this is classy old, I think. 
This is classy old. Yeah, I don't, I've done that thing again. Like, I don't know why I've always picked I pick it, but I don't know why. But you're about to tell me. It's a feel. It's a feel. It's a feel thing. Do you feel the wine when you taste it? You're like, oh, it just kind of like, yeah, it puts it, me here. I think it, it's like a reference thing. It's mm. more like I just think back to every wine that I've drunk that is Old World and it's similar in style. Like, mm. I don't, I'm not very good at like the explanation of the science behind it. I'm just. I find they tend not to be so weighty. And if they're in, yeah. in Australia, because we have a complex in Australia. Yeah. I feel winemakers tend, tend to have a complex. Every winemaker, I feel respectfully, and I, I want to be proven wrong on this, <laughs> just wants to make Pinot. Do you think? And yeah, I think there's like, a, like an obsession. It's like, you know. Making the perfect, like the per Pinot. No, just, just they want to make Pinot. They want to know if make yeah. Even people, when I watch them, like, hey, man, we make like, you know, 15,000 tons of Shiraz a year so I can drink Burgundy. Yeah, like, yeah, like, that, and that is, is definitely like, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you really just want to make Pinot. Uh, yeah. Just move to Burgundy. Like, they're yeah, real, like wonderful what? people. Um, uh, I think this is old world. Yes, it's white wine and it's old world. <laughs> Isn't it right. red wine? It's old world. <laughs> <laughs> it's red wine. It's, old world. It's, like, it's, it's a red wine with absolutely no tannin whatsoever. Yeah. Is it from Portugal, mm. Italy, or Slovenia? Jeez, that's not easy. Do you know what it is? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We just got the good luck. <laughs> um, Portugal, Italy, or Slovenia? I haven't seen a lot of white wines from Slovenia that look like this. That are like lean and like this is this is lean without being too lean. This is Goldilocks zone. But I don't think it's Italy. That's where I. It's that's where I. You're, I, it, like, could I like a, it could be like a aged Vino Verde. No, I, yeah. I, I was. Gonna, I just don't know Slovenian wines enough. To, I'm gonna go Portugal. I'm gonna go Italy. Because I think it could be Suave. I think it could be Northern <laughs> I'm Italian. I'm giveaways, it's just not happening. It's so frustrating. Laura, seriously? <laughs> Ice. Seriously. Too much. It's, <laughs> she's, like she doesn't even know. Whereas like if I'm running the game, I'm like, yes, choose that one. <laughs> yeah, you like you smile, but you're like, no, nah, you're so bad with it. Whereas even when I buy a gift for someone, I just give it to them on the day. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but my birthday is not for like a month. And I'm like, yeah, but I wanted to give it to you. Um, I'm going to go Italy. I'm second with Portugal. It's Italy. <sighs> that really narrows things down. It can only ever be like, Suave Catarato from Sicily or, or uh, Vermentino from, from but like, Corsica, maybe? Pinot Grigio, it could be Pinot Grigio. Yeah, but Pinot Grigio, I don't think Pinot Grigio is given like as much respect in Italy as it deserves. I think every grape deserves the utmost of all respect, but I just think the Pinot Grigios we get inside Australia aren't exactly like a yeah. fair representation. And these are all wines that are available in Australia. They've all come yeah. from importers. Um, and some really niche, so it could, could well be something new. But I just, I don't know. Even Pinot Grigio in in Italy isn't revered the way that uh, that something be. like Suave would. I don't know. It's just not, yeah, people don't give it the time of day. All right. Is it from Alto Adige, Friuli or Veneto? Fuck, that's pretty hard too. Um, I was like, is it is it from here, here, or here? Like literally, it's like they're all they're all bordering each other. Like, do you know, do you know? I I, I know Laura's little trick. This is a reverse psychology thing because she yeah, knows when I'm onto something. What she'll do is she'll try to make it as difficult she just as like possible. Just like you into one. Yeah, because it is totally. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm gonna stick to my guns on this one. It could be Alto Adige. It could be something really cool from Alto Adige. Oh man, it could be some like. Really new school producer Robola Giala. Yeah. New school, like like, you know, what I mean new school, I mean like contemporary commoditized production kind of deal. Yeah. Not like a cool cool natty thing, because <laughs> it's evidently not. It's not. Yeah. It's not. This is classic. Veneto, because it's suave. Am I still guessing? Oh, I feel like you. I'll go. I'll talk to Jay. It's Veneto. Oh. <laughs> wow. 
my lab sweat. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the thing, I want that feeling of like, it feels good, like you've got the whole thing. Right? I, grow on a, I grow on a, like a massive dry spell. I've had a dry spell for the last like yeah. 20 days until yesterday. And then, and then now you're back on a roll. Now I'm back on, yeah. It's because I haven't had any 4X gold in a while. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Just killing those. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, but like, it's a great beer. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beer that tastes like nothing, which is fantastic. It's what I need. It's a camping beer. It's a, oh, Uh, vintage? Uh, 20, um, what were the cold vintages? Do you know, do you know how, you don't know? In, in cold vintages and- I, re I remember like the one vintage I did because I was experiencing it here, as, a, as in like in terms of dates and how late it was. Otherwise, I'm um, terrible. Can I get yeah. options? Is it 15, 18 or 17? I agree. It's 18. It is 18. Super fresh. Just about to change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, I've gone, I'll go <laughs> Stick to it. Is this? Yes, I thought this was it. Yeah. Um, Montessay, Le Batistelle. Yeah, has he, do, you, do you know them? No imports. Well, I've tried it before, uh, Franco Bear Wine. So the, these guys actually distribute our wine over in, um, over, over in the Eastern States. So I've tried it, I've literally, I've tried it once. Um, it, yeah, it's actually really cool. Um, it's actually really cool. If you want to um, um, uh, spittoon that. No, spittoon it. Seriously, you've got to try this one. Wine's for sharing. I'm just going to give you my glass. Yeah, do it, man. They're going around a few Canberra region wineries oh, and so many places uh, just have grapes rotting the vines because of smoke taint. It's so sad. That is genuinely very sad because um, we were actually talking about this before. Uh, so as a distillery, that's something that um, that distilleries are typically pretty good at being able to to play with and, and being able to sort of get out of uh, grapes or have a bit of fun with. Um, but we can totally understand if, you know, it is actually like, don't, you guys might not know this, but to actually pick and harvest those grapes and turn them into wine, it's astronomically more expensive than actually the act of growing them. I'm not saying it's more effort or anything like that. Growing grapes is one of the hardest things you can possibly do, but the cost of it, it's actually cheaper to leave them there. I mean, that is pain. the sad thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if if you can't have a guarantee that you can turn it into really safe wine, it is the unfortunate thing. But that's why I think the owner should be on our local distilleries to be able yeah. to that's pick awesome. up the baton and yeah, do do it. something with it. Like create a product, do something. Mm. Um, here's a free idea that we didn't employ this year, but turn it into vodka and call it fire water. Duh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's like free, free. Uh, <laughs> COVID-19 has encouraged people to embrace online shopping more than usual. I couldn't agree more with that statement. Have you, one I saw that I missed that. COVID-19 has, uh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, Terry, I owe you three from, from memory. Oh, because you hadn't mentioned this. I saw this the other day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Has encouraged people to embrace online shopping more than usual. Yeah, but... Uh, which I think is great. Obviously, I'm an online business. I think it's good and bad. Like, I think people are going to want to get back to the bricks and mortar side of things too. Well, you guys know that rocking up because yeah. you're like, hey, it's cool to see people, to yeah, talk to people. Yeah, and, I you, love and, it. and obviously, with the protest stuff going on, you guys yeah. went, went down and, and, and joined in and actually to talk to people, to see people. Yeah. You know, people in our industry thrive on other people's energy. Yeah. And it's, it's actually like. And you can't, you're never going to replace that. Like yeah. we all, I think people will so quickly, and they already are, want to go back out and want to buy wine, and actually want to browse in a shop for wine. Yeah. But I think there's an element of um, thoughtfulness in planning. So like when you're at home online shopping, you're actually like thinking about it and you're planning ahead, which is a good thing. I don't know, it's just like mindfulness rather than. So I had a, uh, I, I went obviously went out to try to like fix up whatever audio issues that we had yesterday, and um, uh, I was out at uh, good old JB Hi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, no. It's like a nerd's paradise. I love it. Um, but I was I was trying to find a piece of equipment that just doesn't really exist. Like oh, it in doesn't actual, exist. Or it doesn't exist well, anymore. Well, it does exist. It does yeah. exist. But 
you, there are no shops that really sell it. You have to buy it online. Yeah. And I was just like thinking, I've just traveled, literally it was a two and a half hour round trip. Admittedly, yeah. we are rural. Um, but it was a two and a half round, round trip to, to, to try to, to access this thing. And I'm like, I could literally just shop online. Yeah. There's so much like free shipping stuff going around, yeah. especially if you hit a certain certain point of spending that justifies the, the, the free shipping. I think the difficulty- And I can justify free shipping. The, <laughs> the difficulty in Australia is the distance. So unless yeah. you have someone like, you know, I, I could order wine from Sydney, Melbourne, but it would take a few days. And I think that I, especially from England, everything's so close together. I love the immediacy that you're able to offer. Mm. Like the fact that you can get wine the same day is great. But if you don't have that, if that thing didn't exist in Adelaide that you were looking for, you wouldn't be able to. No, to no, no. The same day. So like, if you need it now, you need it. But that's what we get for living in a giant country. <laughs> it's, <huge. laughs> it's, it's, it's a massive country. I, I'm still just so taken by the concept of of being able to order from you and have it delivered. Oh, but it's obviously there's a limit. Well, like, how much I can? Buy. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna go troll you and be like, like <laughs> buy multiple like hundred dollar bottles uh, <laughs> yeah. to, for delivery over. delivery up to Gumaraka. <laughs> there is a limit. There is, there is a, a limit. There is, <laughs> there is. A, yeah, we are always at a radius, limit. Radius. Yeah, that's what people said over COVID. I'm sorry. Um, you, you have to like no one could get takeaway. I went to see a couple of winemakers in the hills, and they were like, I just want like dumplings delivered to my house or just dumplings full stop and like they have to drive to get them because no one will deliver which is sad i feel for those people there, there's a niche i mean it's it's well and truly a niche oh yeah but there is a niche to deliver up to the adelaide hills or rural areas i don't Damn. know who's going to fix it but it is actually something that um you know because we were obviously um we sold a bunch of wine online as well during uh the C word. <laughs> that, uh, time. <laughs> that time. The time that must not be named. Um, <laughs> and we uh, encountered the exact same issue. Uh, and obviously when everyone else was doing that. Yeah. I think we, we had these delivery times from OzPost that just blew my mind. 18 days to get to Victoria. Yeah. 14 days to get from St. Mary's to Lobethal. What? <laughs> If you're lucky, seriously, it was a joke. It was an absolute joke. And I don't think they were geared up enough, but- uh, Yeah, what they weren't the... ready. But then everyone else did better, like took over and they were like, oh, we can do it super quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh great, I'll give you that. Like, oh, my core is and not. Well, this is the, 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 the really interesting thing. And I think BK, when he was on the show, alluded to this as well, uh, that, that the time that must not be named yeah. has actually acted as a bit of an sort of an expose. It's, it's, yeah, it's, for sure. It's exposed a lot of businesses to stuff that they were like, wow, we thought we could rest on our laurels and just yeah. get away with it. But, but they're not prepared. We actually have to improve. We've got to get better at what we do. <laughs> yeah. Like this isn't good enough. And that I think is actually in and of itself one of the best things that's, that could possibly come from this. Notwithstanding the fact that it allowed businesses like your own to be able to actually launch yeah. and become profitable and come on a prestigious show like ours. Uh, no, but in generally, like, you know, even even us, it's helped us become so much more confident in being able to have a direct relationship yeah. and have a direct conversation with people. And I think that there's, that's part of it. Like there's natural conversation with customers often, or I feel like there's, what it's it called, like barriers broken down with people. Mm. I'm so... I always thought like you start a business and you've got to be very business about it. And now I'm like, oh, everyone's having a really shitty time. Just be human. Be not, yeah. And everyone's so nice. Like, yeah. I mean, I think Ali told me this, like you are, I was like, I don't want to interrupt people during dinner when I'm like delivering wine. And she was like, you're delivering wine. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, it's an occasion. It's not a bad thing. So, and it literally everyone's like, we have your wine. You. Yes. <laughs> They love it. And I'm like, oh, this is a great job. Like, you just get people liking you every time you see them. It's my dream. <laughs> just like this bringing wine. They're like the best. I'm like, thank you. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for chiming in. That has, we have hit our time. Um, mate, thank you so much, Olivia. Sorry, for... too keen to dress. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank much. you so much for coming <laughs> on tonight and giving up your Saturday. Uh, Alicia, of course, thank you for being the, the amazing uh, designated driver tonight uh, as well. Uh, we should have you on as well, of course. And yeah. Laura, of course, thanks for, for being acting producer uh, tonight as well. Not acting producer, literal producer. <laughs> yes, she did have a, a microphone for those that were listening. Uh, that is what Noah usually talked into. But now, Laura, we've got, we've got Laura tonight. 
Um, guys, thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow. And it is, it is Casual Business Sunday, isn't it, Laura? That's where we, we take off the wine gear and we talk shit to you. So if you have any questions as well, be prepared. We want to we hear that we're going to be completely transparent with various business-related questions. So if you have anything, get them prepped for tomorrow. But guys, thank you so much. Happy long weekend. We'll see you tomorrow.